Woo. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year to you. How's the family this morning? Let's just hear it for New Year. How's the family this morning? All right. Well, I'm going to take a vote this morning. I, you know, I'm going to have to tell you, 22 kind of sucked. <laughs> So let's just vote this morning. We're going to have a good year this year or not. Let's vote for it. I want a good year this year. Amen. Can we do that? So it all starts with a choice. I got to tell you that uh, Brother Reggie really, he's never missed a New Year's, New Year's morning service. Never has until today. And he's kind of down and out and uh, he's got, him and Terry both have been sick and all that kind of fun stuff. And he, uh, he told me to be sure and let you guys know that he's, he's sad that he's not here, but he just needs some time to recover. And uh, we do need to give him some time to recover. Uh, he came to me and uh, said, Buster, you think you can preach Sunday? And I, well, you know, I'm never going to turn down getting to preach. I said, absolutely. And so I started off and I thought, well, I don't know what God really hadn't told me of a subject to get on to with. And, you know, normally I, I mean, I've had a week or two to kind of think about what the next sermon that Buster's going to bring to uh, y'all. And I thought, well, God, you really need to kind of enlighten me and let me know uh, where I need to go with this. And I'm going to stop right here for intermission. Time out. Let's hear it for the band. I don't see Nick. I guess he had to go somewhere or something like that. But anyway, we, we do. We have got the best band. I really do. I've, uh, undeniable, they are. So anyway, going back to the sermon. Here we go. So I said, okay, God, you've got to give me a sermon this morning. And I can tell you uh, probably uh, I thought maybe this would be a sermon for y'all that uh, God really needed to share this with you guys. But what I found out is God... God says, Buster, this is a sermon for you. It's not for anybody else. Now, if this sermon applies to you, and if God speaks through me this morning, I pray that he speaks to you. Because he sure is. He sure spoke to me. We get up. Uh. This last week in Beverly and I was in Key West, Florida while y'all was freezing your butts off. Uh, <laughs> excuse me just for a second. This time, Ron, let's get, the, let's get the silence going on just for a second. There you go. We, we got this. Yeah, there you go. So anyway, we, uh, we went to Key West and uh, we... Uh, we decided to come back home, and we stayed at a hotel where they offered shuttle service back and forth to the airport. And uh, we thought, well, you know, this is going to be really cool. This is a nice, air, nice hotel, and so everything was going good. And so we, they took us to the airport, and we get back from Key West, and I called them for a shuttle back to the hotel, and they said, are you spending the night here? And I said, no, sir, we're not going to spend the night. Or no, ma'am, we're not spending the night, and we're, we're not going to shuttle you back. And I said, well, if you're going to be that way, I'm good with that. I'm good. We'll just call us cabs, and we did. We get back to our truck, and I put the key in this thing. I got a nice truck. It's a 19 or 2021 Dodge truck. Tommy Stewart made me buy it. It's all his fault. But anyway, I, I, I hit the starter button on that thing, and it goes. <laughs> I thought, holy smokes. I looked, and I said, I'm in the wrong truck. This is not right. But my key's not supposed to work. And then I thought, somebody stole my catalytic converter out of my truck. Just this last week, just this, you know, it was like that. But anyway, I, I can tell you the words that came out of my mouth was not pleasing uh, to God. And I can also tell you that in my mind, I don't know if I said this out loud, but I, I told my, in my mind, and you can, you can clarify this, uh, I, I, my mind said, I hope these people rot in hell. Did I say that or did I just think it? I, I just thought it. Uh. That's not Christian-like. I'm just telling you, it's just not Christian-like to do that. So 
as we was driving home and this thing was noisy, it was like a race car and, and people thought, man, here comes the Indianapolis 500 coming down the highway and, and we was, and I told Beverly, I said, it's going to be noisy all the way home. And we did, we got brought it on home. And anyway, we are, we get, uh, we get down the road and everything's going good. And my mind just goes back to work. And, you know, I got thinking, you know, I'm, I need to be thankful. It, the Bible says to be thankful in all things. And uh, I need to be thankful that we had tires on the truck when we got back. You know, and it wasn't sitting on blocks. So we was able to get in the truck, crank it up, and it was noisy, and it's okay. And we get home, and let me tell you something. It's, it's not a deal breaker because insurance pays for stuff like that, and they, they're very much aware about catalytic converters. Well, then, you know, I had a friend that was a dear friend to me that passed away un, unexpected. Uh, he was, a, he was a great guy, somebody that just the community out there loved. Uh, he had a wife that hated him with perfect passion. We did not know this at the time. He, had, he has two sons uh, by his second wife. One of them's a drug addict and the other one is an alcoholic. And I'm not going to call any names. But anyway, I didn't realize they had so much hate in them. But Dave was all this time. I did not say Dave. The, the man I'm talking about was, was always, he was getting ready for his son that's in prison. He gets out, his son that's in prison gets out this month, and this is his first son by his first wife, okay? So he gets out, and so he's been building all this stuff up so his son would have a job when he got out. I mean, the equipment he bought, the cows he had bought, and all this kind of stuff. Well, unbeknownst to the community out there, these people come in, the second wife come in and sold everything. They hired some people to come in and take a hundred and something head of cattle off that place, took them to the auction barn. And I, I know they didn't get a lot for those cows because you can't flood an auction barn with a hundred head of cattle without any notice, you know, and, and so they're, they're not going to get prime dollar. And then they had to pay wranglers. And anyway, we found out that they was going to sell all the equipment too. And uh, we put together a night raid to get that stuff off of there from what the lawyer said to uh, you need to park that stuff somewhere else where they can't just sell it till we figure out who owns this stuff. And that's kind of where the story comes in. So, again, I can tell you some of the thoughts that went through my mind and some of the things I said about this family was not pleasing to God. And now, now that I'm in the right state of mind, I can... I can honestly say that I'm praying for these people. It's hard. You, you think it ain't, it's, it's hard to pray for people that are doing you wrong. It just is. Uh, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you it's easy. This morning, our church is, the, one of the highlights of my week is this church is, is to be a part of it. To be an associate pastor where Reggie allows me to preach every once in a while, and I'm thankful for that. But it's the family that means so much to me. I'm so excited to get here and just hug your neck, shake your hand, and do whatever, and pray with you, and do whatever. And I would love to, and it, it means a lot to me. And I would love to tell you, this is what, the, a lot of people probably look up to me and they think, well, I need to be just like Buster. If you are, let me, you need to think twice. <laughs> and I'd love to tell you that I never cuss. And I'd love to tell you that I'm always happy. And I'd love to tell you that I never get discouraged. And I'd love to tell you that I never worry. And I'd love to tell you I never wish bad things to happen to other people. It don't work like that. We are human too. We are. And uh, the, the thing about it is God's always right there. And he will never leave me nor forsake me. That's what his word says. And so he's always right there. And I'm so thankful for that. So this morning, uh, we're going to go to Jonah. This is Reggie's, Reg, one of Reggie's favorite uh, scriptures, I think. It's a talking about a fish and a guy. And, you know, I, I don't know what's the matter with Reggie. He just likes to fish. That's all I can tell you. But anyway, this big fish. And uh, we need to talk about that. Jonah is uh, this, this passage, it's, it's four chapters. There's this guy, 
Jonah, I don't know how God picked him because I, I don't have a lot of prehistory on Jonah. I was trying to figure out if, you know, Jonah was, you know, somewhere mentioned somewhere earlier, but I, I, I didn't find it. Not that it's not there. Don't, don't get me wrong. It could be there. But God had enough faith in Jonah, and he told him, he says, I want you to go to Nineveh. And when you get to Nineveh, don't worry about what you're going to say because I'm going to speak through you. Now, anytime you want to talk to anybody about Jesus, the first thing you got to do is get Jesus out of your mouth. Because if you can get Jesus out of your mouth and start the conversation out of way, God will supply the rest. And your brain will just go to work. So get used to it. Just all you got to do is, and when you want to talk to somebody about the Lord, just speak, say, I, I need to tell you about Jesus. And once that starts, it all works out good. So we're going to start off in Jonah, in, in uh, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of uh, Amethal, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed to Tarshish. He went to Joppa where he found a ship bound for a port. After paying the fare, he boarded us and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great big wind in the sea. And such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break it up. And all the sailors were afraid, and each one, I want you to kind of catch a hold of this, each one prayed to their own God. So that tells you something right there. And they started throwing cargo off into the sea to kind of lighten the ship up. But Jonah had gone below the deck where he was laying down and fell into a deep sleep. When the captain went down to him and said, how can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he'll take notice of us and we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, come on, let's cast lots and find out who's responsible for this calamity. They casted lots and the lot fell on Jonah. I don't know whether you know what a lot is. I, I, we all have uh, probably played a lot. Uh, have you ever played spin the bottle? Some of you are going back to my time. I'm telling you, you're going to go back to the day when we didn't have the internet and all that fun stuff. But you ever play spin the bottle? Don't you answer that. It's okay. Have you ever drew straw, straws? You know, the, the shortest straw wins or the shortest straw loses, whatever. Uh, a lot of times we can do rock, paper, scissors, however that works out, you know, and that's a lot. It is. And, and back in this day, what they did back in this day is they would color a stone. They may paint it. I don't know how they colored it or what they did. Or maybe it was just another stone that was discolored. But anyway, they put them a hat and everybody reached in and grabbed a stone. And if you picked out the colored stone, you're it. They may have took sticks and just broke sticks up. And they said, okay, I've got all these sticks in my hand. Draw a stick. And they'd draw sticks. And whoever had the longest or the shortest, however they chose it, that was a lot. Well, anyway, this fell on Jonah. And he said, and so they go, um, all right, let me find my spot here. Okay, so they asked, they, the sea was getting rougher and rougher, so they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm down for us? Jonah says, Jonah knew he was running from the Lord. He knew why the ship was doing all the stuff it was doing. He says, pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that this is my fault. It's a great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did the best to row, the, row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Listen to this part right here. They had just all prayed to their own God, and listen to where the, all the people on the ship start this way. Then they cried out to the Lord. So they changed God's. Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing this man, this innocent man. For you, O Lord, have done, done as you pleased. They took Jonah, threw him overboard, and the raging sea became calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. So then they changed the God that they've been serving. So now they have come with a new beginning. And that's what we're talking about today. This is New Year's. They had a brand new beginning there. The Lord provided a great big fish to swallow, <laughs> swallow Jonah. All right, Reggie, you'll be proud of this. He's swallowing your buddy there. So they swallowed Jonah, and Jonah was inside him for three days and three nights. Now, 
Jesus was crucified. He was in the tomb three days. All right, so this is kind of parallel to that. Going to chapter 2. From the inside of the fish, Jonah started praying to the Lord his God, and he said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me from the depths of the grave. Now, I don't care how deep or low you think you are, you're never far enough where God can't reach down and touch you and pick you up. If you think, if you think what I have done in my life, God can't forgive me. Change your thoughts because God will reach down and pull you out of that. All you got to do is ask him. So he says, I called out for help and you listened. You listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths of the very heart of the seas and the current swirled about me. Your waves and breakers swept over me. And I said, I have been banished from your sight. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Sea, seaweed was wrapped around my neck. And I can, you know, when you get a visual of this and seaweed wrapped around his neck, stinking fish inside this big fish's mouth. And, and I, I can tell you the fish didn't brush his teeth before he picked up Noah. It just didn't. The roots of the mountains I sank down to the earth be beneath barred me in forever. But you brought me a life up from the pit. Oh, Lord. When my life was embedding away, I remember you, O oh Lord, and my prayer rose to you. Those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. I got to tell you what grace is. Grace is give us, giving something that you don't deserve. That's what grace is. And Jesus applies grace to each one of us to forgive us of our sins that we did not deserve. He goes on. He says, but I with a song, thanksgiving will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish to vomit Jonah onto the dry land. I can tell you, Jonah smelt real good after being in that fish. And I, I hope he took a bath, got a bar of soap and took a bath. I don't know. But uh, here we go. Starting in verse in chapter 3, he says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Our God is a God of second chances. Giving him a second chance. He says, Go to the great city of Nineveh to proclaim the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. How Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started in the city. He proclaimed, Forty days and Nineveh will be overturned. So Nineveh was a, God had just uh, had enough. And I'll put it that way. And I'm going to say that. You kind of listen to this. God had enough. He says, I've had enough of Nineveh. They would skin people alive. These, these people were wicked. They was doing, and there was, I believe it was, uh, 130,000, 130,000, is that right? I think there's 100. Anyway, we'll see it in a minute. But anyway, they was real wicked people. And so I'm, I can be honest with you, Jonah was scared to even go there. But he went because he knew better after, at that point. So he had his second chance. So the Ninevites believed God. And I don't know what, if, if the city was that big of 100, I think it's 130,000 people. If the city's that big, I don't know how Noah could get his message out to all the people in that, in that three days. But he did. Somehow it got out there. And listen here as it goes on. The, the Ninevites believed God. They declared a fast of all of them from the greatest to the least. They put on sackcloth. Okay, now you got to know what sackcloth is. Uh, let me find sackcloth here. I, it's a, I, I, okay, here we go. Sackcloth. Uh, so this is a way of repentance back in the day. They would put on sackcloth, a cloth made of black goat's hair. It was thick, it was rough, and it was uncomfortable to wear. And they would sit down in the dust and cover themselves with dust. This is a way of their repentance. It says, when the news reached the king, the Ninevites rose, he rose from the throne, took off his royal robe, covered himself with sackcloth, sat down in the dust, then he issued a proclamation to the Ninevites by the decree of the king and his nobles. Do not let any man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything. So they're going on a fast. He says, don't let them taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let man be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on the Lord. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows God may yet 
relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so we will not perish. So somehow Jonah got a message out to him, you boys better straighten up, act right, get some repentance because you, it's not going to be a good day for you. It just It's not going to work out for this city. So when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion. Did not bring up on the destruction that he had threatened. Now, Jonas has already been through a well. He had been thrown overboard. And he's going to Nineveh. And, he, and in my opinion, he wanted some retribution to go to Nineveh and God to wipe them out. That's kind of my take on this. And Nineveh was kind of where Buster was with these people that stole my catalytic converter. The people that are suing me right now, and I don't have $7,500 laying around in my little piggy bank to pay a lawyer, but, you know, it's just what it is. Jonah's anger at the Lord. Now, now Jonah's, I'm not going to say the P word, but he's upset. Jonah was greatly displeased and became angry. He prayed to the Lord, Oh, Lord, is this not what I said when I was still home? That is why I was so quickly to flee to tarnish. I knew that you were you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger, abounding in love, a God who relents from sin and calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. How many of you have ever felt sorry for yourself and thought, well, you know, I think this world would be a better place without me? I know I have. But uh, I didn't shoot myself, and that's good. I'm just saying. But there's people that do that, and I'm sorry. If, you, if you're thinking that thought, you need to change his thoughts real quick, for sure. It says, but the Lord replied, have you, do you have the right to be angry? Jonah went out and sat down at a place to eat the city. There he made himself a shelter, sat down in the shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. He wanted to see the city crumble. Then the Lord God provided a vine to make it grow up over Jonah, gave him shade his head to eat, a head above his head to ease the discomfort. But Jonah was very happy about the vine. But dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed up the vine, so it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind. The sun blazed on Jonah's head so, so that he grew faint, wanted to die. And he said, it would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, you don't have the right to be angry about the vine. He says, I, he says, I do. He said, I am angry enough to die. But the Lord said, you have been concerned about the vine, though you did not make it or grow it. It sprang up overnight, and it died overnight. But the Ninevites has more than 120,000 people and cannot tell their right hand from the left and many cattle as well, should I not be concerned about that great city. So I don't care how bad the Ninevites was doing down there, and I don't care how bad the United States is doing down there, but he has compassion. It may come to a day when God says, I'm, I'm ready. Hit the red button. Go get my people, and I'm good with that. I'm very ready for that. Um, I'm going to tell you, y'all have kind of heard just a little bit about what's happened to me and my wife here in the last two or three months with this, all the stuff that's going on. And, and I can tell you, we've been in the belly of a well. But I know my God can overcome these people. Let me tell you something. There's going to be a light that shines in darkness from me and my wife when this is all over with. They will see the glory of the Lord and how we respond to them. They will see that God lives through us, and I pray that. Some of you might be in the belly of a big fish today. I mean, you've got a lot of things going on in your life. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just tough. Tom talked a little bit about tithing just a while ago. Uh, this is Buster. I'm not trying to burden you with anything, but we believe in tithing, and I can tell you we but there comes faith with tithing. It, it's, it's faith knowing that God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in heaven. November of this year, we had a bunch of expenses that was way astronomical that we did not see coming. I did not tithe that month. And so in my mind, in my mind, I said, okay, God, I owe you 
I'm going to give to you my tithe. It's just going to be a little bit late. I think what God said to me was, Buster, do you not have enough faith? Do you not have enough faith to think that I will get you through this? So I had to ask for forgiveness, God. And so this new beginning this year is for me to put my complete trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you, tithing is a form of worship, but it has to come from you, and it's not me. And I'm, I'm just telling you what Buster does. That's all I'm going to tell you is Buster does that. And it's, it's such a blessing. And like Tom says, you cannot outgive God. Uh, you cannot. Uh, but just know, my God, your God, will meet all your needs according to the glorious riches in heaven. And even though I wake up in the morning worrying about this lawsuit and worrying about what's going on, I wake up every morning, I seriously do, with that on my mind, just about the first thing that goes off in my mind, and I have to reconstruct that real quick and say, God, you got this. And in Philippians 4, 6, he says, don't you worry about anything but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present that to God. Give it to God. Thank Him. Amen. There is 15 different verses in the Bible about loving your enemies. It talks about chunking coals on their head. Uh, and you think, well, if you chunk coals on their head, you're going to burn them. That's not what it means. It means that, you know, if you give them some coals to put in their whatever they're carrying, they can go light their own fire, okay? And it's, that's kind of what that means. Uh, but there's 15 verses in loving forgiveness. Um, and all you, if you want to Google that, just Google forgiveness in the Bible and see what happens. I'm going to close this service on one verse, and I just I want you to... Uh, I do want you to turn with me if you would. Let's go to Matthew. We're going to go to Matthew. We're going to be in chapter 28. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right, 28. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. Again, I need you to understand this. Anytime you hear a preacher say he's talking to his disciples, he's not talking about the 12 anymore. He's talking about the people sitting in the J-bar seats out here and all this in, this in this nice building that we have. He's talking to you, and this is what he says. And you pay attention here because it's, okay, it is Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to start off in verse 18. You ought to have, everybody ought to have this verse highlighted in your Bible, underlined, because I've got it highlighted, underlined, and all kinds of markings on it. <laughs> But this is what he says. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And sure, listen to this. This is my favorite verse. <laughs> and surely, I am with you, even to the end of the earth. God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And I, I've got to add one more punch in here just for a second. And that's Noah. I'm sorry, Jonah. When God asked him to do something, he said, uh-uh. So what I'm going to tell you today, if God is speaking to you about anything in your life, about baptism, about accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. If he's speaking, this is, not, this is not Buster speaking to you. It's a Holy Spirit that's going to speak to you directly, not to me. He will speak to you directly. If he's speaking to you, say, yes, I'm going to give you my life. Yes, I'm on this new year. Start. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. 
This year needs to be a whole lot better than last year. Can you vote for that on that one there? It needs to be a whole lot better than last year. Because last year was tough, but we got through it. And I'm going to tell you something. We will get through 23 also. I just want it to be better. But here's the thing with us as a family here. Hook on to the plow. Look forward. Don't ever look back and plow the ground that needs plowing where God leads you. And keep plowing and don't look back. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we do thank you for the day and just the blessings of just being here this morning. And what a beautiful way to start a new year off, to start it on a Sunday morning. Father God, I just want to say that I love you. Father God, there's a lot of people in this congregation, congregation this morning that can say the same thing that I'm saying to you right now is, I love you. Father God, I ask for your protection, your guidance this year. Help me to be the disciple that you're asking me to be this morning. Lead me. Let me start today with a new beginning, Father God, that I will hook onto the plow. I will never look back. And we'll plow the ground that you've asked me to plow. And I will do my best to serve you, Father God. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you've been putting that off and you're thinking, maybe God's speaking to me today about being, you, you can't, you can't, God's not going to hear what you got to say unless you tell him, I need you to come into my life. Once you invite Jesus into your life, that's when the whole thing starts for you. And you can start this prayer off, say it out loud, quietly, however you want us to respond to this prayer. But you say, you can just pray, Father God, I know that I'm a sinner. And let me tell you something, Buster is a sinner. And I know, Father God, that you died on the cross for my sins. And you have mercy that you did something for me that I couldn't do. And you're giving it to me freely. And Father God, I ask you, come into my life. Be my God. Walk with me. Never leave me nor forsake me because that's what your word says. And help me to never leave you or let you down. Father God, I give my life to you this morning. And all this we pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time here at JBRC, let me just tell you something. Welcome to the family.